Hi, and thank you for choosing Prophecy. In this video, we'll talk about focusing event-based cameras and the particularities of such a process. We'll also show you an example of how to focus with an EVK4 using the default optics. The video targets any person working with event-based cameras. As a prerequisite, we expect you to have one of Prophecy's EVKs or RDKs. In case you have the EVK4, then we suggest you watch the EVK4 unboxing and installation video on our YouTube channel. In this video, we'll cover the focus adjustment of event-based cameras versus frame-based cameras, the different focusing targets, some terminology around the lens like the aperture and the focusing distance, the full focus adjustment procedure, and a demo of said procedure. We'll start with the focus adjustment on the event-based camera versus the frame-based camera. In the following part of the video, we're going to use some flashing lights and high contrast patterns. If this shall affect you, please take the necessary precaution. We apologize if this disturbs you. There is a difference between focusing event-based cameras and frame-based cameras. Frame-based cameras can see static objects, which simplifies the focus adjustment. Often, a static printed chart is used as a target for focusing. Event-based cameras are designed for dynamic scenes and moving objects, where no static object can be seen. Therefore, we're using dynamic targets, for example, a blinking pattern like a star or a chessboard, or static targets under motion by either moving and shaking the target or the camera or using some form of active light. The goal of the focus adjustment is to sharpen the edges of the target. Ideally, we aim at seeing edges as thin as possible and be able to distinguish patterns of the highest possible spatial frequency. For example, in case of the blinking pattern in the form of a star, we want to see the smallest possible edges in the center of the stars. If your setup permits, we suggest you to use dynamic targets. For example, a blinking pattern can be shown on any display like a telephone screen, tablet, laptop, or computer screen. It should be placed in front of the camera at the distance of the target object. Any pattern can be used, for example, a star or a chessboard. You can also use a spinning disc with any target on it, like an edge, a star, or a chessboard. You can try to focus directly on the object, its contour, and or the texture. Ideally, the object should move slowly to be able to be focused. If it doesn't move, then use the target as a static target. Static targets can be used under some motion, for example, by moving or shaking the camera or the object, or using a shaking active front light or blinking backlight. Among static targets, you can use a simple ruler. Its advantage is having both edges and text, which are usually well contrasted. A transparent ruler is good to use with a backlight, and a metal ruler is better to use with an active front light. Alternatively, you can use a printed marker with contrasted edges or stripes. It's helpful if the target object doesn't have contrasted texture, then you can stick a marker to the object. Finally, if using none of the earlier focusing targets is possible, then simply use any thin edge or small text, preferably with a good contrast. The optimal target depends on your setup, the space available within the setup, and the application. The lens that comes with the EVK4 is a Soyo optic with an 8mm focal length. A link to the data sheet is given in the description below the video. This lens allows us to achieve a diagonal field of view on the EVK4 of 47 degrees, making it possible to use for close and mid-range applications. The minimum object distance, or MOD, is 0.1 meters, or about 4 inches. This lens allows us to adjust the aperture and the focus distance. This isn't always possible on other types of lenses. The aperture defines the amount of light that passes through the lens to the sensor, and it's expressed as the F number, also called the F stop. On this particular lens, the F number ranges from 2, a large aperture, to 11, a small aperture, and C means a closed aperture. The focus distance allows us to adjust the focus at different distances to the target. Imagine that we have our camera placed in front of our focusing target that can be one of the objects that we want to capture. In the case of having several objects, you can start with one object in the center or in front. We'll explain later how to adjust the depth of field to see sharp multiple objects at different distances. In this setup, we can easily vary the distance from the object to the camera, and this distance is called the working distance. To adjust the focus, we need to rotate the focus ring on the objective to find the optimal sharpness of the target. Once we are focused on our target, we are focused on all objects in the focusing plane. If at some point we need to reposition the camera toward or away from the object, 
then we will need to readjust the focus ring. Now we're going to see the effect of adjusting the aperture. The aperture determines the amount of light passing to the sensor and also the depth of field. The depth of field is the maximum range where an object appears acceptably sharp. The relation between the depth of field and the aperture opening is the following. A large aperture opening will give you a small depth of field, and decreasing the aperture to a smaller size will give you a larger depth of field. You can approximate the depth of field by using the equation on screen, where u is the target distance, n is the aperture, or the f number, f is the focal length of the optic, and c is the circle of confusion that defines the acceptably sharp focus. If your depth of field is very small, you can use this equation to get an approximate value that will simplify the camera focusing. Note that not all lenses allow adjusting the aperture. On some lenses, the aperture is fixed, especially on compact lenses. It is important to take into account that the aperture limits the amount of light passing through to the sensor. For example, if we compare a large aperture f2 and a small aperture f11, a large aperture allows passing more light, but it decreases the depth of field, where a small aperture will allow the passing of very little light, but it'll increase the depth of field greatly. Usually, the aperture range is marked on the lens, and every increment of the f number, for example f2 to f2.8, reduces the amount of light by one half, and every decrement of the f number from f11 to f8 doubles the amount of passing light. Please take into account that more light is beneficial and even critical for some applications as it gives faster pixel responses, smaller pixel latency and jitter, that make fast moving edges look much sharper, and less background noise. More information on the sensor functionality and its KPIs can be found in the Introduction to Event-Based Vision Sensor video and the Sensor Datasheet. Do note that there is a trade-off between the depth of field versus the amount of light passing through the objective to the sensor. To begin the focusing, please follow this procedure. First, select the focusing target. Place the target and the camera at the needed distance. Maximally open the aperture, choosing the smallest F number, to get the smallest depth of field. Adjust the focus ring on the objective until you see the focusing target as sharp as possible. Adjust and narrow the aperture to increase the depth of field if needed, but don't close it too much to keep enough light passing to the sensor. Here's an example of a setup. The EVK4 is used with the default optics. It's placed in front of the focusing target, such as the blinking star pattern shown on a display. And here you can see the data acquired by the EVK4 and visualized by the MetaVision software. Here we'll show you some examples of a good and bad focus. The blinking pattern is used as our focusing target. Here the camera is out of focus as the target is very blurry. Bad focus means that we can already see few edges in the central star. A weak focus means that we can see the central star better, but still not the small stars in the corners. Good focus means that we can see almost all of the edges in the small stars in the corner. And fine focus means that we can see maximal edges in all the stars, including the thinnest edges. The MetaVision Intelligence Suite provides an application called the MetaVision Blinking Pattern Focus that helps to adjust the focus for an event-based camera. The application provides a score determining the sharpness of the edges. The higher the score, the sharper the edges, and the better the focus. The score is based on the discrete Fourier transform computed from the acquired data transformed into an image. To adjust the focus using this application, simply start the application, place the camera in front of the blinking pattern at the target distance, and adjust the focus ring on the objective and the aperture, if available, to get the highest possible score. The application is installed together with the MetaVision SDK in the bin folder, and also its source code is installed in the share folder. For more details, check out the documentation page linked in the description below. Now we're going to show you how to focus the EVK4 camera with the default optics using the blinking star target. We'll start with the aperture. To change the aperture, we'll move the inner ring on the objective. We'll set the aperture to two, that is the maximally open aperture, and then we're going to adjust the focus ring. Let's place our camera in front of the focusing target at the distance of the target object. We're going to acquire data from the camera and visualize them using MetaVision Studio. For the moment, as we can see, the camera is completely out of focus. Our goal is to see the blinking pattern sharp. We're going to adjust the focus by rotating the focus ring on the objective. 
After some adjustments, the focus seems already much better, as we can see some edges on the blinking star. Let's continue adjusting the focus distance, and we'll see more and more edges on the blinking star. Now we have quite a good focus and we can see lots of edges, but we don't yet see all of the edges in the small stars. They're much smaller, higher frequency, and harder to see. We'll need a few more tiny adjustments to get fine focus. And unfortunately, in this video, it's hard to see the results on screen. However, now we can see the edges very sharp, even in the small stars. Once you're happy with the focus, you can slightly close the aperture to get a larger depth of field. Please don't close the aperture too much to not lose too much light. In this video, we've shown you how to focus an event-based camera, showing you which focusing targets are usable, the role of the aperture and the focus distance, what the actual focusing procedure is with an example on the EVK4. And we also learned that there's a large difference between the focusing procedure for an event-based camera and frame-based cameras. It's easier to focus with a maximally open aperture than it is to readjust the aperture later on. And we also learned that there is a trade-off between the depth of field versus the amount of light coming into the sensor when closing the aperture. More details can be found in the documentation and publication linked in the description below the video. We look forward to your feedback. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next videos.